After failing the strategy, I chose death as a way to return to my original world. Three peaceful years passed, and then the system suddenly contacted me. Host, do you remember the mission we worked on three years ago? It seems that the target of your strategy has discovered the reason for your death and is about to turn dark. So we are humbly requesting you to return and help calm the person down, to put things back on track. I looked at my wife and my adorable son, torn between the two choices. Chapter 1. When the system came knocking, I was enjoying the beauty of the Mongolian grasslands. Not far away were my beautiful wife and my toddler son. Nearby tourists were saying enviously, you're really fortunate, graduating from a prestigious university, being a middle manager at one of the top 100 companies, having a wife from a well-off family who is kind-hearted, and a healthy, lively son. If it weren't for the system's sudden reminder, I might have forgotten that I had such a past. Host, how have you been lately? Its voice was hesitant, as if unsure how to start the conversation, greeting me awkwardly. So, do you remember the mission we worked on three years ago? Because you chose death as a way to leave the mission world, you became the unforgettable first love of the target. For the past few years, she's been searching for the truth behind your death. Recently, she found some clues. The situation is a bit tricky now. She seems to be losing her mind, even showing tendencies of self-harm. So, could we humbly request you to complete one more task for us, just one month? After one month, regardless of the outcome, we will send you back and never disturb your life again. I lowered my gaze. If she's gone mad, she can go register at the psychiatric department. I'm not a doctor, but she's like this because of you. Don't you feel even a bit of pity? Olivia, going mad. I let out a cold laugh. When I left back then, we had an ugly falling out. Even when I said I would die, she didn't stay for even a second. I was her simp, a fool who came and went at her whim. I once ventured out in the pouring rain to buy her a bowl of dumplings she wanted, but she didn't wait for me to return. Instead, she got into Henry's car and went with him to a fancy western restaurant. I stood outside with the dumplings, waiting for her. When she came out, she looked at me with surprise and irritation. William, what are you doing here? She saw the dumplings in my hand, furrowing her brows. You really went to buy them? I only mentioned it because I felt like it, not because I love them. She glanced back at the elegant, peaceful environment inside the restaurant. Don't you think I'm more suited to eating there? She didn't even look at me once when she left, but now, the system says she's going mad because of me. Chapter 2 Perhaps my sarcastic smile triggered the system, as it spoke quickly and irritably. Have you forgotten? You two have a child together. Thinking of the child, my hand instinctively clenched. Back then, while I was completing my strategy mission, Olivia was a crazed second female lead who was desperately pursuing Henry. She had grown up with Henry, and their families had even arranged an engagement ceremony for them. They were a perfect match, talented and beautiful. It all seemed so fitting. But then Roxana appeared. Henry was irresistibly drawn to Roxana, to the point where he defied his family, broke off the engagement, and gave up his inheritance to follow Roxana abroad. By the time I arrived, Olivia had already become a notorious villain, despised by everyone. It was I who slowly guided her redeeming her bit by bit. We naturally ended up living together, planning our future. We even held a wedding and had a child together, Kevin. At that time, I looked forward to our future life, even considering staying with them forever. But when Kevin was just over a year old, Henry returned. After leaving with Roxana, Henry had been cut off from all financial support. A young master who had never lifted a finger couldn't maintain his lifestyle without backing. The two of them quarreled constantly over basic necessities. After one particularly heated argument, Henry left Roxana and came back. That day was my birthday. Olivia and I had planned to celebrate as a family at home. I waited from 6 o'clock until 2 in the morning when Olivia finally opened the door. I knew she had gone to pick up Henry. I even overheard a phone call between them where Henry said, Livy, we've known each other since we were kids. Of course, I have feelings for you. Olivia's eyes welled up, as if she had found hope again, and she left me for him once more. Yes, once more. This had happened dozens of times over the past five years. I was the only one who knew that Henry and Roxana would never break up, and I was the only one willing to wait for Olivia time and again. Olivia froze for a moment when she saw the cold dishes and untouched cake on the table. She quietly placed the sleeping Kevin back in the room. I'm sorry, William. Happy birthday. I got so busy I forgot. I'll make it up to you with a gift tomorrow. Okay. No need. The birthday had long passed, and I didn't need any gifts anymore. Chapter 3 During that period, I felt like I was stuck in an endless loop. I desperately tried to be good to Olivia, just as I had in the beginning. I didn't want her to hit a dead end, nor did I want to lose her so easily. She spent every day with Henry, coming and going from the company, discussing business until late at night. One day, I couldn't stand it anymore and shouted at her, Livy, do you even have a heart? 
Olivia had never seen me so out of control before. She took a few steps back, irritated. William, why are you acting like some resentful woman? Stop overthinking. Henry and I have known each other for over 20 years, and I'm only helping him get back into the Fu family. But just a few days after saying that, she started taking Kevin to meet Henry. The breaking point for me came when Henry brought them home. And Kevin, who had just learned to speak, called out, Daddy, directed at Henry. That was the first time Kevin ever called anyone Daddy. And it was Henry, the person who humiliated me the most, with Olivia's help. Henry managed to regain his footing in the Fu family after three years. During those three years, Henry, Olivia, and Kevin acted more like a family than we ever did. They celebrated holidays and birthdays together, exchanged gifts. Kevin even called Henry Fu Daddy. But Kevin, now over four years old, had never once called me dad. Every time I tried to correct him, Olivia would stop me. He's just a kid. Why are you pushing him so hard? Then Kevin would go even further, saying, I like Fu Daddy better. I don't like you. I don't want you to be my dad. The day Olivia decided to take Kevin on a trip with Henry, I made one last attempt to stop her. With tears in my eyes, I looked at her and asked for the last time, Livy, if you go to him, I won't be able to live anymore. Even if it comes to that, would you still choose him? But Olivia wasn't listening. She thought I was trying to manipulate her. So, her eyes filled with frustration and irritation as she said, William, I never really liked you that much, and you know that, I never really liked you that much. I watched her leave with a heavy heart and softly said, goodbye. She heard me, but her steps only paused for a moment before she walked away without hesitation. The system sighed and asked me, are you really going to leave this way? I was resolute. I was sure of it. If I couldn't leave a mark in her heart while alive, then I would choose death to forget her. Chapter 4. Please reconsider. If only for the fact that I fought with all my might to bring you back three years ago. The system's voice echoed once again. I hesitated. In my reckless youth, I was obsessed with extreme sports, and it cost me dearly. When I was on the brink of death, it was the system that gave me a second chance at life. Even though I had failed my mission back then, the system took pity on me and didn't erase me. Instead, it restored my health. My wife was the nurse in charge of my recovery. At the time, she marveled at how I was a medical miracle. When I told her my secret, she was moved and even a little awed by it. But that didn't stop us from falling in love, getting married, and having a child. Now, torn between the system that saved my life and the family I love, I found myself deeply conflicted. That night, Jessica noticed my distraction and gently asked me what was wrong. After thinking for a moment, I decided to tell her the truth. Jessica, what do you think I should do? To my surprise, she took my hand. No matter what, it's still a life. I think we shouldn't give up on her. I knew her words came from a place of trust in me, but also from her instincts as a healthcare professional. My eyes stung with emotion as I squeezed her hand in return. Aren't you afraid I might not come back? She smiled playfully at me. We've been through worse. I trust you more than I trust myself. Our son, fast asleep, turned over and mumbled. Daddy, tenderly, I tucked him in and made a promise to Jessica. Don't worry, I'll finish this task as soon as possible. You'll have to take care of our son in the meantime, and when I come back, I'll make it up to both of you. Chapter 5 I returned to the real world after only three years, but the mission world had already progressed ten years, and now, ten years later, Olivia was looking at me with such devout eyes. She said to me, William, is that really you? She pushed the child next to her towards me, saying, Kevin, go ahead, call him daddy. Kevin's face turned bright red as he walked up and tightly hugged me. Daddy. In the past, I had imagined countless times what I would feel if Kevin ever called me daddy, but now that he did, I felt nothing but calm. I sighed and decided to tell them the truth. Livy, from the moment you left me, I had already said my goodbyes to you. I really died. You saw the body, didn't you? She became emotional and shouted in despair. No, no, that wasn't you. How could someone as dignified as you accept such a tragic death? Watching her emotions spiral out of control, I couldn't help but regret agreeing to the system's request. Olivia's condition was worse than I had imagined. Much worse than when Henry had abandoned her. You can think of it as a brief revival or a soul's crossing. But in any case, I will only stay here for a month. I came back to repay the system's favor. After a month, whether you accept reality or not, I won't stay. I hope you don't make things too difficult for me. Afraid that I might leave immediately. Olivia, discarding all pride, pleaded. It's okay. It's okay. Even just for a month. As long as you're here. Olivia brought me to where she currently lived. A spacious flat in a prime location. Facing the sun on one side and the sea on the other. It was the home we had once planned together. She handed me a new set of clothes with a smile. William, I've always kept your things at home. I never believed you were truly gone. I raised my hand to stop her. How is Henry doing? Back then, I chose to leave this world by dying. 
and the fastest way was a fatal accident. I chose a car crash. However, both the system and I miscalculated, and the person who hit me turned out to be Henry, the male protagonist. After the accident, Henry fled the scene, and the system couldn't allow its main character to become a criminal. So, under the system's influence, the Fu family used their connections to cover it up, arranging a scapegoat for Henry. Ten years later, Olivia finally uncovered the truth. I died under Henry's car ten years ago. How strong must his mind have been to finish repairing the car and pretend nothing happened? Continuing to travel with Olivia. The system told me that over the past ten years, Olivia used many methods to uncover the truth, even coming close to being silenced by the Fu family. And for my sake, what price did Henry have to pay after Olivia went mad and harmed herself? Chapter 6. Olivia fell silent. She couldn't answer. I knew it. The system said she had gone mad. But as soon as she saw me, she seemed better. Does that count as madness? The system said she wanted to die. But she never succeeded. Is that really wanting to die? The Fu and Su families had been intertwined for decades. Their interests long bound together. Olivia might say she couldn't forgive Henry for what he did. But when the Fu family seeded three projects, she gave up. William, now that you're back, can't we just live a good life together? I chuckled, looking like this, if I appeared in front of anyone else, who knows what kind of panic I might cause. Especially my parents in this world. In a month, I will leave again. They've already accepted my death and moved on with their lives. I don't want to disturb their hard-earned peace. So, I rarely went out. Sometimes at night, Olivia would beg me to accompany her and Kevin for a stroll. I couldn't bring myself to refuse, because as soon as I opened my mouth, Olivia would get agitated. She would pull at her hair like a madwoman, yelling, you've already decided to come back. Why are you still treating me like this? It was only in those moments that I could truly feel she was indeed unwell. She wasn't mad. She was numbing herself, as if in doing so, I could forgive her past cruelty, and now her cowardice and ambition. I wore a mask, staying half a step behind them as they walked. After a few outings, someone photographed us, and the pictures were posted online. Sue family heiress spotted dating a new man, smiling shyly in public, hinting at a possible relationship. As soon as the trending topic hit, Olivia's phone almost exploded with calls. Among them was a call from Henry. Livy, I know you're upset about me marrying Roxana, but I've already made Kevin my godson. You know Roxana's health was damaged years ago and she's no longer able to conceive. If you agree, Kevin will become the future heir of the Fu family, so there's no need to find another man to provoke me. To prove she had no contact with Henry, Olivia put the call on speaker in front of me. But Henry's words were so suggestive, Olivia's face turned pale as she snapped. Henry, stop talking nonsense, I stopped loving you long ago. And as for Kevin, he will never acknowledge you as his father. What did I say wrong? Wasn't it you who abandoned William, the sickly man, and even tried to kill Kevin? William probably didn't even know you were pregnant with his child when he died, did he? Henry sneered and then dropped another bombshell that shattered my worldview. He definitely wouldn't know that you had two abortions because you weren't sure who the father was. Shut up. Olivia's face turned white, and she screamed at Henry, and what about you? You've been using me all along. Yes, I used you, and you used me. We're the same type of person, Livy. Break things off with that man, or I can't guarantee what I might do. Henry paused, then suddenly asked. He's not with you, is he? I exchanged a glance with Olivia. As she hung up the phone, I regretfully pulled my hand out of my pocket. Henry wasn't wrong. I was indeed right next to Olivia. Not only was I there, but I also secretly recorded the conversation. Chapter 7 The next day, after Olivia left, I was responsible for taking Kevin to school. Kevin was already 14 years old. I used to love him dearly, but now my feelings for him were complicated. I couldn't love him as I loved my own son but I also couldn't deceive myself by pretending he didn't exist. Even so, I couldn't make any promises to him. I dropped him off at the entrance and watched as his classmates ran up to him, their curious eyes falling on me. This is my dad. Kevin introduced me loudly to them. By age, both Olivia and Henry were approaching 40, but I was only 25. It wasn't a stretch to say I looked more like an older brother. Children's eyes tell the truth. One of his classmates, thinking Kevin was exaggerating, stuck out his tongue and said, That's your brother, isn't it? Who are you fooling? I'm not lying. He really is my dad. I watched them safely enter the school gates before leaving. But instead of heading home, I took a detour to buy a surveillance camera. Before Olivia returned home, I had a technician discreetly install the camera in an inconspicuous spot. Knowing Henry, after discovering my existence, he wouldn't just sit back and do nothing. It wouldn't take much for him to find out that I was home almost all day. From a few vague photos, he'd conclude that I was Olivia's kept man. Then he'd wait for a moment when Olivia wasn't home to come by and provoke me. However, 
He moved faster than I expected. Just after I sent off the technician, the doorbell rang. I saw Henry's face on the monitor. At first, he calmly rang the bell twice. When he got no response, he frowned and pressed it a third time. By the fourth ring, he realized I was deliberately ignoring him. So he started pounding on the door, yelling, I know you're in there. Open the door, now. In the brief moment, I changed into a robe, revealing a large expanse of my chest, along with some intentionally rubbed red marks. When I opened the door, Henry was still shouting, I want to see what kind of boy toy Olivia's keeping. I stood in the doorway, while he stood outside. The moment Henry saw me, his voice quivered with disbelief, afraid that he'd run off before the camera could record anything. I grabbed him and pulled him inside. Mr. Fu, what brings you here? Henry stepped back, leaning against the door, his calm demeanor from earlier gone. He stared at me in shock, pointing, William, but you're dead. How can you be here? Then, shaking his head violently, he continued, no, you're not William. I personally checked his body. It's impossible for him to be alive. Who the hell are you? Chapter 8. I am William. I am a character in everyone's game in this world. My existence is meant to redeem the wicked supporting female lead and ensure the happiness of the male and female protagonists. But Henry accidentally caused my death, turning him into an imperfect male lead. He learned to lie, became malicious, and indulged in deceit. Even now, though he knows I've returned, he's afraid, he's terrified, but he won't apologize. Ten years ago, I waited in vain for his apology. Ten years later, I have to rely on my own means to ensure he faces punishment. Yes. There's another reason I agreed to return for the system, to see if the male protagonist, who killed me, would ever pay the price for his actions. I smiled at Henry. I'm William, from City A, a graduate of University C, and I'm 25 years old. With each sentence, Henry's face grew paler. It wasn't until I mentioned my age that he sighed with relief. Olivia really goes all out. Finding a double that looks this much like him, he circled around me, clicking his tongue. If it weren't for the age, I'd almost think William had come back to life. Oh. It seems Mr. Fu is quite fearful of this William. He snorted. So what if I am? He died ten years ago. Right under my car. Suddenly, he caught himself and stared at me. Even if you're not William, your existence is still a problem for me. I don't like other men touching my woman. You're only sticking around Olivia for money. I'll give you three million. Just stay away from her. Henry's words left me silent. I connected with the system in my mind. How is the worldview of this place still holding up? Why hasn't it collapsed yet? The system's tone was somewhat embarrassed. The writer is working overtime to come up with a redemption arc. I cleared my throat and looked down at Henry. Don't you have too many women, Mr. Fu? As far as I know, you just got engaged to Miss Roxana last month. Roxana is my wife, and Olivia is my woman. Is there a problem with that? I let out a soft laugh and accepted the card he handed me. No problem. Of course. But leaving takes time. In half a month, I'll disappear without a trace. You have my word. Henry's actions were like a gift in disguise. As I watched his confident figure walk away, I played with the card between my fingers. Half a month was enough time for me to use the money Henry delivered to orchestrate a grand plan. If I relied solely on legal means to punish him, he'd find plenty of ways to escape. So I had to expose his crimes and true nature to the public. With society's judgment, there'd be nowhere for him to hide. I just wonder, what expression will he have when he finds out it was all my design? But I won't get to see it, because in half a month, I'll be leaving, as agreed with the system. Chapter 9. Olivia suggested that we go back to my hometown, a city. I knew she was trying to use my parents to keep me. I raised an eyebrow as I watched her pack clothes into the suitcase, piece by piece. William, I took a long vacation for Kevin. The three of us can take this time to relax. Last year, I took Kevin back to see my parents. They miss you too, and they'll be very happy to see you. Watching her treat me the way I used to treat her filled me with a strange sense of awkwardness. I wondered if Olivia had felt the same when I first approached her. Kevin was busy running around, clearly excited. I sighed and said to Olivia, it won't work. I have parents over there too. I wouldn't abandon my choice for either side. Besides, I now have a wife and a son. I wouldn't be moved by her or Kevin. Tears instantly welled up in her eyes. She was genuinely upset, probably crying more quickly now than she did when I died back then. No, it can't be. William, you loved me so much. How could you marry someone else? Are you mad because I let Henry go? I'll withdraw the project, and I'll help you get him arrested. Okay. Back then, I loved her so much, I was even willing to abandon my parents to stay with her. But that deep love had faded during my time with Jessica. Kevin started crying too, sobbing as he said, I hate Henry, I want daddy. Daddy, please don't leave, I'm your son too. But my other son had only just learned to say, daddy. I touched my chest, taking a deep breath. Fortunately, I wasn't heartless, although I wasn't completely unmoved. 
I was sure I hadn't wavered emotionally because of Olivia, I truly didn't love her anymore, I just hoped all of this would end soon, so I could see Jessica and our son as quickly as possible, I pressed down on the suitcase, Livy, don't go to a city, if you really can't let go, I'll go with you to the class reunion in three days, I paused, then added, as your spouse, Olivia had begged me a week ago to attend the reunion, and I had immediately refused, her eyes brightened when she heard my words, all right, all right, I'll do as you say, Henry would definitely attend the reunion, and Roxana, as his partner, would surely be there too, I squeezed my phone, some things, of course, weren't meant for me to enjoy alone, chapter 10, but tomorrow and accidents, you never know which will come first, Olivia made breakfast, but just as she sat down to eat, she suddenly grabbed a trash can and began to vomit, afterward, she wiped her mouth and looked at me, I was halfway through eating an egg and immediately waved my hand, I've only been back for half a month, and I haven't touched you, Olivia chuckled, half laughing, half crying, as she explained, believe it or not, I haven't been with anyone for a long time either, recently, it's been hot, and I haven't had much of an appetite, that's probably why I keep feeling nauseous and have stomach pain, instinctively, I asked, has this happened a lot, Olivia thought for a moment, three or five times, maybe, what, did you learn medicine in that other world, perhaps because I had agreed to go to the reunion with her, she felt my attitude had softened, and her tone was more playful. I opened an app on my phone and swiped a few times. I booked you a checkup for tomorrow morning. Your lifestyle has been very irregular these past few years, so it's better to be safe. Still, I didn't jump to the worst conclusions. I wiped my mouth and sat on the couch, waiting for her to finish getting ready. We were late, and when we arrived at the private room, the door was slightly ajar. Inside, I overheard some of the classmates chatting. I heard Olivia is keeping a boy toy. What boy toy? He's been out of school for years, just a pretty face, that's all, even with a good face, can he compare to our school's golden boy, foo. Henry chuckled, my wife's still here, and you dare joke about me. Olivia couldn't stand it any longer, she grabbed my arm and pushed the door open, I've been hearing you all talking about me from far away, if you have something to say, feel free to ask me directly, I'll answer every question. The room fell silent, when they saw me, they all looked as if they'd seen a ghost, William, Chan. Chapter 11. Everyone's mistaken. Henry raised his glass and stood up. William died a long time ago. He died in such a gruesome way that you all probably don't know about. When he was hit by the car, his face was completely smashed. I heard that before the burial, the mortician worked non-stop for three days and nights just to make him look decent again. His body was in pieces. He then pointed at me. This guy here is also named William, but he's just a young man who graduated a few years ago. He's not like us middle-aged guys. He's young so it's not surprising that he'd want to take some shortcuts. I hadn't even said anything when Olivia couldn't hold back any longer. She raised her hand and slapped Henry across the face. Henry, what right do you have to talk about William? She pulled me back to my seat, still glaring at Henry. Don't go too far. Roxana, unwilling to see Henry being humiliated and already at odds with Olivia, immediately stood up as well. Why, Miss Olivia, are you so upset because you've been exposed, or are you not used to being on the receiving end of a slap? In the past, Roxana would never have dared speak to Olivia like this, but now, as the future daughter-in-law of the Fu family, she stood tall, looking Olivia straight in the eye. Olivia had always been eccentric, with few friends. At this class reunion, not one of the thirty-odd people present spoke up for her. I looked at her with a complicated expression. She awkwardly touched her hair. I did indeed do a lot of bad things in the past. Most of the people here had probably been on the receiving end of her sharp tongue at some point. I don't know if Olivia has bullied others but I do know that we respect the dead. Oh, I forgot. Mr. Fu graduated so long ago that you must have returned all that knowledge to your teachers. Huh? And that tragic accident. How come you speak about it as if you were there? Could it be that you felt a special connection with the driver? Henry hadn't expected me to insult him after taking his money. He was stunned, pointing at me and sputtering. You, you. Midway through the gathering, Roxana stepped out to use the restroom, and I found an excuse to slip out as well. As we passed. I slipped a USB drive into her hand. I suggest Miss Roxana find a way to view this without Mr. Fu around. The USB contained a recording, surveillance footage, and a stack of private photos I had hired someone to take using Henry's own money. The women were all different, but the man in every picture was always Henry. Chapter 12 Olivia drank some alcohol and went straight to bed when we got home. In the middle of the night, she suddenly knocked on my door. The noise woke me, and I pounded my bed in frustration before getting up to open the door. She was nearly squatting on the floor, clutching her abdomen, and looking up at me pitifully. William, it hurts so much. I took her to the hospital. After an ultrasound, 
the doctor, with a grim expression, ordered a CT scan and several blood tests, all marked urgent. Three hours later, Olivia was hooked up to in four, and the doctor called me aside. The results are in. It's liver cancer. Preliminary diagnosis. Mid-stage. There's a chance it could be cured. Through the small window of the door, I looked at the sleeping Olivia, unable to believe it. Doctor. She's not even 40. The doctor sighed. Is it so rare for someone that age to get sick these days? He shook his head and left. By the time Olivia's four was finished, it was already past eight in the morning. The nurse had just removed the needle when she tried to get out of bed. Kevin is home alone. I stopped her. I asked your mother to go over. Then I'll go to the office. I didn't let go. I asked your father to go there. She stopped moving and sat back down on the bed. Am I going to die? Not necessarily. Mid-stage liver cancer. If you cooperate with the treatment, there's a chance of a cure. She let out a bitter laugh. So this is my karma finally catching up with me. She initially tried to put on a brave face, but soon broke down and began crying uncontrollably. Why is this happening? I'm only in my 30s, and Kevin is still so young. I didn't know how to comfort her, so I just patted her on the shoulder. I told you, you're not going to die yet. Wasn't she the one who wanted to die for me just half a month ago? It seems that when death is really knocking, no one can suppress their fear. William, could you stay with me a little longer? I frowned and sighed deeply. What could I do? I was being emotionally blackmailed. On Olivia's fifth day in the hospital, Henry and Roxana came to visit. While Henry was talking to Olivia, Roxana signaled for me to step outside. Mr. Chan, how much do you want for the negatives? I stood across from her, stunned. I couldn't believe that after seeing all those damning videos and photos, her first thought wasn't to leave him, but to cover it up, you're actually going to forgive him. Roxana's face looked sallow, and she seemed utterly exhausted. What choice do I have? I lost two children abroad because I didn't know better, and now my body isn't the same. Henry's right. I may never be able to have children, if I leave him. How am I supposed to live? How to live? Any other life would be better than spending it with a scumbag like him, especially considering he's a murderer. I closed my eyes briefly. If you leave now, Henry might still be generous enough to give you money to support your future, but if you don't go, you'll end up with nothing, because I'm not going to destroy the evidence. Chapter 13 Not only did I not destroy the evidence, but I also found the men who took the fall for Henry and was placed under medical parole years ago. He didn't recognize me, so he didn't know who I was. This man spent three years in prison and then seven years in the hospital. Who knows how much longer he'll be stuck here. This hospital feels more like a prison to him than any actual jail. He was eager to vent his frustrations, and with a little nudge from me, he said a lot of things he probably shouldn't have. For example, clenching his fists and staring out the window, he said, the Fu family promised me that after my medical parole, they'd find a way to get me out, but they went back on their word. Of course, they did. For the Fu family, a man stuck in a hospital is far safer than one out in the world who might cause trouble at any time. If they hadn't feared him running his mouth in prison, they wouldn't have bothered pulling him out at all. Mr. Paul, do you know that the person responsible for the accident now runs the Fu Corporation? He's worth billions. Do you think he's ever come back to thank his savior? Paul's face turned even angrier. He's only where he is today because of me. If he's worth billions, shouldn't I get at least half of that? I chuckled at Paul's ignorance and absurd ideas. So, do you want to overturn the case? I know you have evidence. Paul hesitated. He did have evidence. But he hadn't overturned the case because he feared the Fu family. He was scared they'd make him disappear before he ever made it to court. I placed a photo in front of him. It was a picture of me from 10 years ago. You don't recognize me because you weren't the one behind the wheel that day. If you were, you'd have figured it out by now. I'm William, the one who died in that car crash all those years ago. Chapter 14 On the day Paul retracted his confession, only two days remained until the one-month agreement. I contacted the Fu family's rivals and sent them all the recordings and videos I had. Without any further action on my part, the negative news about the Fu family spread like wildfire across the internet. At the same time, Paul sat in front of the courthouse, surrounded by eight bodyguards I had hired for him. He started a live stream, revealing the truth from back then and played the recordings of Fu's mother contacting him. Standing in front of the camera, he made sure to capture the words justice and fairness in the frame. He said, I'm about to go in now. The Fu family may have the power to cover everything up but I still believe in the law. If all this is not enough to convict Henry, I ask all netizens to bear witness for me. The Fu family is the biggest cancer in Sea City. While I watched the live stream from the hospital, Olivia was awake. She had just undergone surgery and was now entering the radiotherapy phase, looking listless. Was it you? She asked. I hesitated for a moment, then turned my gaze to her and smiled. He did it on his own. The Fu family's stocks plummeted, and the Sioux family also suffered greatly, but Olivia didn't seem to care anymore. 
Kevin came to the hospital too when he learned that Olivia was sick. His eyes reddened. As I went out to get some water, Kevin tugged at the corner of my clothes. Dad, can you stay? I turned my head to look at him, squatted down, and explained seriously, Kevin, technically, we've only known each other as father and son for a little over 20 days, just as you didn't recognize me as your father when you were younger. I also can't fully accept you as my child, because my child is waiting for me at home. I didn't know when Olivia had appeared behind us, but she had overheard those words. She didn't say anything, forcing a smile. Let's go back inside. At night, Kevin slept in the adjacent room while I lay on the sofa. The door to Olivia's hospital room was left open. Just as I was about to fall asleep, I suddenly heard her voice. Are you leaving the day after tomorrow? I responded softly with a hmm. Then I heard her sigh. William, do you hate me? I sat up and asked myself if I hated Olivia. It seemed like I should, but strangely, I didn't, because I no longer loved her. Livy, your illness is still in its middle stage, and the Sioux family has the resources to provide you with the best medical care if you cooperate with the treatment. Your chances of recovery are quite high. Kevin needs you to take care of him too. She didn't speak again. I lay back down, preparing to rest, but then I heard her suppressed sobs. William, I'm so scared. Could you, could you please not leave? Livy. I saved you, and you saved me. Now that I've returned, it's only to set this world back on track. You're scared because your life has been too smooth. You don't know, but I once fell from a wall dozens of meters high, and my whole body was shattered. It was Jessica who stayed with me and helped me survive. Now, she's still waiting for me. She loves me, and I love her. We can't be apart. Chapter 15 The weather on the day I left was similar to the day I arrived. I helped Kevin pack his school bag and then took him to school. At the school gate, Kevin hugged me tightly. Dad, don't worry. I'll take care of mom. I patted his head and watched him disappear from my sight. When I returned to the hospital, Olivia's parents were there. Her mother saw me and only tucked the blanket tighter around Olivia. You came back once. Aren't you going to visit City A? Wouldn't you regret it? I shook my head. They're at peace now. Olivia sat up halfway, looked at me for a long time, then forced a smile. William, you should go. Be happy in the future. I will. You too. When I return to my own world. It was the middle of the night. I gently opened the door, and Jessica was holding our son, both sound asleep, ignoring the need to shower. I climbed into bed and embraced them. Jessica murmured softly, You're back. Huh. I squeezed her hand. So calm. Sleeping so soundly. Were you not afraid I wouldn't come back? Jessica turned to face me, kissing my nose and chin. But you did come back, didn't you? I believe in you. My eyes moistened. A warm light. A bed. And the three of us tightly embraced.